Hey everybody, welcome. My name is Matthew. Thank you so much for joining. Today, I think we have an interesting one. Following up on the 10-year U.S. government bond yield over the last 60 years. Remember, this is the main, main metric when you talk about pricing a bond. What is the yield? What is the yield to maturity? What is the IRR? What is the compound annual growth if I buy and hold this bond for the stipulated duration, in this case, 10 years? That's the yield to maturity. Check out my last video if you want to see uh, the different percentile bands that this uh, yield to maturity has been in in the last uh, 60 years. Also, the average interest rate, which is about 6%, and where we are now uh, at about 4.2%. But today, I wanted to talk about how much the Federal Reserve, that is the central bank, could perhaps control this yield. Now, remember, there's a difference between the Treasury and the Fed. The Treasury is the one that issues these bonds. The Treasury, when they need to finance their deficits, which is often for all governments, when they can't fill the whole of their expenditures with taxes, they fill the difference firstly and foremost with debt bonds. Okay, So the price of those bonds is here. Now, the question is, the issue of the currency, the monetary policy, the Federal Reserve, how much might they actually control this process? Interesting question. Hopefully, I can give you some insight into that today. So first of all, let's look at the Fed Fund's target rate. It's a rate that the Federal Reserve sets. It is a target rate. It is not the interest rate for the economy, but it is a reserve that banks in the system, which are all regulated by the Federal Reserve, banks lend scarce federal funds, that is bank reserves, to each other at this rate. And I'm going to put that rate on here right now in red. All right. This is the Fed Fund's target rate. From 2008, it's actually the lower bound. They had an upper and lower bound, which was pretty dumb in 2008. But anyway, this is the lower bound to see how low it could go. It went to zero post-global financial crisis and uh, during COVID. So this is obviously, you can see it's pretty jagged, straight liney uh, across many different periods. Certainly doesn't seem market-based. Uh, this is them supposedly setting the uh, federal funds rate. That is not the interest rate that the Fed lends to banks. That's the discount rate. But this is the rate at which banks lend to each other. Okay, important distinction here. Now, the federal funds rate itself uh, goes back many years before this. Um, I'm not showing that. didn't want to have too many things on this uh, chart. Federal funds rate itself, that is the market rate, which would look much more jaggedy like this 10-year yield does. That was actually peaked at 22% here in 1980, 81. So it was actually well above the 10 year treasury. It's a full inversion of the 10 year yield curve uh, here in the 80s. Um, but it's just to show you that the short term rates can be just as extreme as the long term rates. And really, the appropriate way to say that is long term rates can be as extreme as short term rates. Why is that? Well, the Federal Reserve will tell you that they don't control long-term interest rates, such as the 10-year government bond. They only control short-term interest rates, short-term funding, overnight funding, monthly funding, weekly funding, the funding at which banks lend precious, scarce reserves to each other. And that is true. Uh, I wouldn't deny that. Nobody should deny that. This is an overnight rate here in red. But look at just over the last you know, 40 years here for, for, for the data that we have of the actual Fed funds target rate, the rate that they set, the rate that the Federal Reserve sets for short-term funds, look at how close this uh, correlates with the long-term rate or the 10-year rate, which is a very, very important benchmark rate for the economy. The question could be, which controls which? Who controls who? Is the tail wagging the dog or is actually the dog wagging the tail? It's a difficult question. Um, many people have done lots of research papers about that. It is, it is certainly admitted by the Federal Reserve that they do control short-term interest rates. Okay, But the question is, how much might they control longer-term interest rates like the 10-year government bond? Well, I'm going to show you one metric here. I think it's very interesting. You typically don't see this. And let's just go ahead and layer on the actual ownership of United States government bonds, all of them, short-term, mid-term, long-term, all of them, versus the United States debt. And that's going to be a black line on the right axis right now. 
All right. Probably don't see this too often. This is the Federal Reserve's ownership of U.S. debt as a percentage. Okay. National debt is $34 trillion now. Of course, that doesn't include unfunded liabilities of Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid. Uh, the on the books, on balance sheet national debt of the United States is $34 trillion. At the moment, how much does the Federal Reserve own of that? Look at I'm looking at the black line here. The black line, right-hand axis, 20.8%, almost 21%. 21% of the United... of all of the United States government bonds outstanding are owned by the Federal Reserve. Interesting. Okay, so how does that look historically? We want to talk about how the Federal Reserve might have controlled short-term and long-term interest rates. Let's look at this ratio over the long term. Let's go back here to Vietnam. Vietnam ended here in 1975. You can see it was a top 17.6%. Okay. It's uh, not 90%. Of the government, the Federal Reserve doesn't own ninety percent of the debt, but they owned seventeen, eighteen percent here. Okay. When we went off the gold standard, uh, there was even more money printing, of course, uh, to fund the debt. But actually, as a proportion of the total, interestingly here, it fell. Okay, so as a proportion of the total debt that the United States had, it fell all the way to we can see, kind of bottomed out here in the start of the nineties. All right, and then uh, we see it went back up. Uh, and then sort of went sideways, interestingly, here. And I'm going to take the red line off just so you know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, this is the proportion of the Fed ownership of the total debt. Till 2008, it was pretty low, okay? 8.99% of the total debt. It wasn't as low as the early 90s, but it was still pretty low. Then it dipped here right after the global financial crisis. What was this? Well, this was the Federal Reserve actually not trying to be too uh, conspicuous with all this debt on their books. They sold into the market uh, the bonds that they owned. They sold that into the market, and they actually bought corporate bonds. This was a big part of the corporate bailout, the TARP, the TALF, all these things in the global financial crisis. So they actually changed the composition of their balance sheet to have even less government bonds, and they had more corporate bonds during this time while they were rescuing the economy. Then here we see QE1. Two, three, where the money printing really came on. Uh, we don't have to discuss all the implications of this money printing, but for sure, when the Fed prints money to buy bonds, that is the definition of money printing. And here they went from basically under 5% of total United States debt by the time that QE3 was all said and done, almost 25%, 23.5% of the total United States government debt was owned by the Federal Reserve. All right. Then they tried to do, as they say, normalize the balance sheet over these years. They tried to take it down, down, down. So just before COVID, it was down to 15%, which is interesting, back about the level that it was during the Vietnam War. And then COVID, massive stimulus, boosted it all the way to an all-time record of nearly 30% of United States government debt was owned by the Federal Reserve. And now they've been trying to normalize again, even last year uh, with the banking, uh, uh, Silicon Valley and Silvergate banking crises. They uh, still tried to take it down, even with their implicit guarantees to banks. Uh, now it's back down to 20.8%. So very, very jagged, very rough here in the post-2008 global financial crisis. Interestingly smoother than here. You see it bounces around a lot more here. Almost seems more market-like here, almost. But here it's very smooth, very regimented. People kind of expect that the Federal Reserve is going to do uh, what it says, interestingly. The main point here is if you want to ask how much does the Federal Reserve, which does admit they control short-term rates here, this is in red, the short-term rates, how much do they really control mid- to long-term rates, All right, which is in green, the yield in green, Besides just using your eyes and seeing there is a clear correlation between short-term rates and long-term rates, as short-term rates go down, so do long-term rates. If that didn't convince you that the Federal Reserve does control uh, the pricing of this market with what it does, printing money to buy government debt, this might, this might change the picture a little bit. Okay? I'm not saying I know what the right percentage is except maybe zero. That would be a pure free market. But when the Federal Reserve steps into the market to buy United States government debt, 
via the printing press, which is that that is how it works, this is how much of it they are doing in the black, the black line on the right hand axis. Okay. So interestingly, it's been as low as 5% while they were bailing out the corporations in uh, Lehman Times 2008-2009, as low as 5% of government debt to as high as 30% in the last 15, 16 uh, years. The question is, how much of the long bond, of the long-term debt, and of course there's even longer-term debt, there's 30-year government bonds. Some nations have 100-year government bonds. But the trend here is clear. You're seeing more central bank ownership of a separate branch of government, the fiscal branch of government, the Treasury's national debt, the Federal Reserve, uh, pretty jagged, has been as high as 30%. And you might want to ask yourself, when you own as much as 30% of the government bonds that float around the, in the market, and you can buy or sell these with a keystroke, uh, how much does the Federal Reserve control the price of the 10-year government bond? Leave a note in the comments, please, if you have anything more to add to this. I will leave it with that rhetorical question. Hope you like this. Thanks for watching.